Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's great to be here worshiping this morning. Great to see all of you. Brother Jack Littlefield, great to see you back there. And Kathy, glad to have you here this morning. Well, we have a special treat for you this morning and this afternoon too as well. We have Dr. Jennifer Sears with us this morning. Jenny is a daughter of God. She is a wife, a mother, and she is a psychologist who works as the Director of Social Emotional Learning and Mental Health at the Penn Harris Madison School Corporation. Dr. Sears received her Bachelor of Science from Olivet Nazarene University. Give it a woohoo, yeah. She received her Master's in Education and her PhD from Indiana State University and her School Administrator, Administrator's License from Bethel University. She is a master trainer for ACE Interface and a certified trainer in restorative practices and restorative circles. Prior to her current position, she has been an adjunct at both St. Mary's College and Bethel University, special education supervisor and lead psychologist. Dr. Sears has worked in schools, clinics, family counseling centers, and juvenile placement centers to help support educational, social, emotional, behavioral, mental, and psychological needs. And she is going to be sharing with us this morning. So, Northside, would you give a warm welcome to Dr. Jenny Sears? We are excited to begin this conversation this morning about mental health. And I'm excited for Jenny and what she's going to share with us. And then we're going to break for lunch, and I want to let you know that we are planning to be back here at 1 p.m. for a part two, and then at 2 p.m. for a part three. So I hope you can make plans to, to be a part of this. I really, really believe God's going to do some incredible things this morning through uh, our sister in Christ, Jenny, and what she has to share, and I'm excited to hear from her. Are you excited, church? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Jenny? All right. Thanks, Pastor Tim. So I just want to thank you all for letting me be here with you today. I'm really excited um, to come talk about something that I think is something that's real in a lot of our lives, and that's mental health. And I think a lot of times we don't talk about it because for a lot of different reasons. And so I just want to applaud the church for taking time to talk about real issues that affect all of us. And then hopefully through our time together, we can gain a Christian perspective about mental health and maybe feel a little bit more comfortable about talking about it and maybe addressing some of the, the issues that surround mental health. Okay, so um, to get us started, we're going to do something and I'm not going to ask everybody to say true or false, but we're going to do just a little true or false for yourself, just kind of a reflection time. Um, and. I'm just diving right in because I want to just kind of bust up some of those stigmas about mental health, especially from the Christian perspective. So I'm going to put three statements up here and just think to yourself if you think that's true or false, and then I'll tell you what I think, and then we can, uh, <laughs> so hopefully you're not wrong. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then we can go from there. So the first one, Christians should not have mental health concerns. Don't, don't say it out loud. Just think to yourself, please don't. <laughs> So, true or false? False, okay? So, we are people, and we are not exempt from any type of concern. Mental health concerns have a physical base, and so just like we're susceptible to physical ailments, we're susceptible to mental health concerns as well. Okay, so we're, we're starting out heavy, sorry. Okay, so I'm a Christian, therefore I shouldn't have to take medication to help with mental health concerns. What about that one? <laughs> I think I heard somebody false, right? So, <laughs> so just like physical concerns, sometimes we need medical therapies. Not every time, but there is a place for that. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later um, in today's message. And then what about this one? I'm a Christian, therefore I shouldn't go to counseling. Okay, they're all false. All right, so... <laughs> It's like the, you know, when you take a test and you're like, C, 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 that's kind of this. So false. All right. So we definitely, 
there is a place for counseling as well as part of a treatment package. And so we'll talk about that. So I just really wanted to bust up some myths related to mental health so we can get that on the table and push that aside. And then we'll kind of dig into that a little bit. And like Pastor Tim said, we um, have some more sessions this afternoon. And when I, you know, when Pastor Tim and Trina were like, can you talk about mental health? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's such a big topic. Where do I even start? So I feel like these are kind of the things that are a good solid base for a vast topic. So let's debunk that stigma. So a lot of times people in the church don't talk about mental health for a lot of different reasons, um, but it is important. We're the hands and feet of Christ, and so that we, we need to be equipped to be able to help people. I'm not like, you're not gonna walk out of here being a therapist or a psychologist or anything like that. <laughs> so don't, don't think that. But you will get some practical strategies that anybody can do and anybody can use to help yourself and to help your brother and sister in Christ. So a lot of times we don't talk about it because there's a stigma around it. Like we think that there's something that maybe have a, it has a negative connotation. We also, as Christians, sometimes don't talk about it because there's this belief that Christians shouldn't have mental health concerns, right? We should just be able to kind of pray it away. And we'll talk about that um, as we go through this morning's message. Sometimes we have limited proximity to mental health concerns. Maybe it impacted our life, but we um, feel ill-equipped to help. And so we'll, we'll talk about all of this this morning, and hopefully you can walk out of here with um, a refreshed view on mental health. Okay. So why are we talking about it? Why are we having this entire full day of mental health at the church? Well, because it's not taboo. It's something that we all, it, that impacts all of us. Um, in fact, a lot of times people, you know, when they talk about mental health, they think about just mental illness, but mental health is something that includes our health. Like when we talk about our physical health, we eat right, maybe we exercise. There's a lot of things that go into being healthy physically. And so when we talk about mental health, there's a lot of proactive things that go into being mentally healthy. It's not just the illness part that um, encompasses mental health. And so we'll talk about that. And like I said, it impacts many people. I think um, sometimes people, when they think about mental health, they think, you know, the, the kind of the extreme of some significant illnesses. But um, the pandemic, the social unrest that's been happening, you know, with this past year um, has really brought mental health concerns, chronic stress into a lot of our worlds, maybe where we didn't face it before. And so it's really important that we feel equipped to kind of handle some of those situations. Um, so today, the whole point is to gain a basic understanding, know that you are not alone, know that God loves you no matter what, and that the church is here to help you, and so we can offer that Christian perspective um, to help you through whatever you may be dealing with. Okay, so that's kind of our why. So what is mental health? Like I, I kind of alluded to that already. Mental health encompasses both the health aspect as well as the illness aspect. So SAMHSA, which is the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration, um, says that mental health is really a state in which you have a well-being in which the individual realizes his or her abilities, they can cope with normal stressors, they can work productively, and then they can make a contribution. So that's, that's mental health, that's what it is. It's this kind of whole, whole self um, aspect. And I know a lot of times, and this is just like a side, um, I wanna thank Stephanie for putting together the notes for today. She did a great job and she's talking about the whole self. And I work in the schools, and so a lot of times we talk about the whole child, like how many people have heard about the whole child, right? So we're talking about like mind and behavior and all of these different things, but we really can't address the whole child because we can't, in a public school, really tackle that, you know, spiritual element. And so the church can. And so when we talk about the whole person, the church is the only place that can really address the whole person. So I just want to put that out there. Okay, so when we talk about mental health, we have that, but we know that there's also some mental illness that can occur. And we might be wondering why. Why can this happen? How does it happen? And there's lots and lots and lots of reasons. And these are just a list of some of the reasons, but really when we're talking about mental illness, it's a set of symptoms that help people identify 
what type of maybe treatment to use, maybe identify the root cause to kind of help a person move forward. So um, it can be related to physical causes, it can be neurological occurrences, Hereded hereditary, maybe we're predispositioned for something and a traumatic event occurs or a stressful event occurs and kind of sets in the motion some illnesses. Um, it could be adverse childhood experiences and or ACEs. And I don't know if you, how many people have heard of ACEs before? Okay, so yeah, some people who especially who have worked in the school. And we have a whole session on ACEs and trauma. Um, at one o'clock today, so just a little shameless plug if you want to come back. Um, it could be unresolved trauma. A lot of times, um, you know, one of the best things we can do after a traumatic event is help that person through, have that relationship, and sometimes people don't get that, and so that can lead to mental health concerns. It could be from abuse, um, the impact of a really harmful relationship, chronic stress, these internal mismessages that we give ourselves substance abuse or it could be because of other causes so those are just a short list of how a mental health or a mental illness might um, occur and so when we think about mental illness i wanted just to bring to light this analogy about this palm tree so and i i love the verse psalm 92 12 the righteous will flourish like a palm tree and if you think about a palm tree it you know I love palm trees. When we go, we just went on spring break last weekend. We were taking pictures of all the palm trees because we love them. They're, <laughs> they're, they're tropical. They're fun. They, but sometimes they withstand. They, they're in storms. And, you know, the storms come, those hurricane winds come, and they batter that palm tree, right? But God made the palm tree to be able to withstand storms. And he made us to be able to withstand some of the storms of life. So a palm tree, if you think about it, it's not wood like other trees it's a spongy firm material inside so it can bend up to 50 degrees without breaking so when the winds come it looks like it's going to break but as it's bending it's getting stronger and it, then it you know after the storm passes it can stand back up and it you know it might be battered it might have lost some some palms but it's still standing and god can use that he can use storms in our life to help us be resilient to help us stand back up and we'll talk more about that later this afternoon, too. Sorry, lots of shameless plugs here. So, okay. So when we talk about mental health, I'm going to talk about a couple things um, in the next part of this discussion today. And we want to be self-aware. We want to be aware of our emotional state. And we want to be aware of stress. Because when we're self-aware, then we can regulate. And based on whatever we're going through, that helps us know what strategy to implement to help ourselves regulate and manage that, maybe get through the storm. And when we're regulated, we can connect with others, we can connect with Christ, and then we have improved mental health outcomes, we see, our, we, we see ourselves better we, through Christ, we, we see ourselves the way Christ made us, and then that, again, impacts our self-awareness, and so the cycle continues. So just so you kind of understand like where we're going um, in the next part of the discussion. So when we talk about awareness, there's awareness of certain terms related to mental health. So raise your hand if you've heard of PTSD, anxiety, depression, right? Uh, these are all kind of common terms that we've all heard of. Stress, <laughs> right? We, like we've heard of stress, right? So there, those are, just being aware of some terms is really helpful, and, but um, also being aware of your emotions is important. So a lot of times we think emotions um, don't really play a part maybe in mental health or in our daily lives, but the Bible actually talks about emotions a lot. And here's just like a really quick short list. It talks about anxiety, anger, being courageous, cheer, gladness, jealousy, joy, mourning, rejoicing, like all of these things. And I think a lot of times, unless the emotion is really positive and happy, we push it down and we try to hide it instead of being open about this emotion and um, trying to manage it so that it doesn't rule over us. And so we'll talk about some strategies that we can use to do that. Emotions really help us give credence to our experiences, they help us make judgment, they help build our cap capabilities, and they help us connect with other people. In Romans 12, 15, it says, rejoice with those who are rejoicing and weep with those who are weeping. So when we experience our emotions and we let them be real, and we can, we can use that to connect with others through the church. 
Um, and Jesus expressed emotions, you know, the shortest book, in, uh, shortest verse in the Bible was Jesus wept, right? So he was expressing emotion. And so it's okay. Um, and the Bible talks about what we can do with those emotions as well. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more, you know, um, in Ephesians 4.26, it says, don't let, what'd you, what'd you say, Matt? Exactly. <laughs> Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And then Proverbs 16, 32, be slow to anger. So these emotions are real, but how we manage them is what, ma like, where it kind of counts, okay? So we'll talk about some strategies to help us manage some emotions as well as um, strategies that we can use to help other people. Um, just really practical ways, some practical things. Okay, we're also going to talk about stress. <laughs> So just saying that word, does it cause stress? Like sometimes I say stress, I'm like, ah, it's so much. Okay. Um, who here thinks stress is good? Just raise your hand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm here to tell you it is actually good <laughs> in some aspects. Okay. So our body, God made us to be able to deal with stress. He knew that stressors were going to come, and so he created this neuroendocrine system in our bodies to be able to handle stress, to get away from that proverbial bear in the woods, right? So we see a big threat, we need to be able to get away. So I'm gonna give you a really quick <laughs> overview of some, um, there will not be a quiz, the kind of your stress response and what your body does um, when you recognize a stressor. So your body is constantly taking in information from your senses, from your eyes, your ears, you know, like all of this information is going into your brain constantly. And when your body senses a, a stressor, a threat, some kind of danger, it automatically in, um, activates your stress response system. So your HPA axis, which is your hypothalamus, your pituitary, and your adrenal glands, they start secreting all of these neuro neurotransmitters throughout your body so that you get this, it increases your heart rate, your blood sugar goes up, so you have this burst of energy, so you can have this fight, flight, freeze response, right? So you can get away from the bear, you can survive. Your body will kind of have the same response to like a bear or the stress of a bill at the end of the month, or your test coming up next week. The issue is, those are all great. Like your stress response is great, while your HPA is kind of secreting cortisol in your body, you have this other thing going on in your mind. You have this corticotropin releasing factor that shuts your hippocampus down. The hippocampus is where like learning and memory take place. So that takes that offline for a little bit. So your other system can kind of take over and you can escape that bear in the woods. Well, after about 20 minutes, that's how long stress should kind of last. That's how like your body's normal stress response, your, um, your hippocampus comes back on through this negative feedback loop. And then the stress is supposed to be over. The problem is we are in a lot of times chronic states of stress. And so our stress response system does not shut down. And so things like cortisol get a lot of bad press when it's, a, it's actually like a good thing, but it gives a lot of bad press because all these chemicals, these stress responses, uh, responses uh, chemicals are just pumping through our body and it's like wreaking havoc on our body, causing a, really a toxic environment inside of our body. And so, what happens is when we're under chronic stress and that we don't have kind of this break, this calming state again, we, have, we might be edgy, we might be angry, we might yell a lot more, we might be tired, like we have these responses. And so we need to be aware of our stress response so that we can help manage that a little bit better and try to get to a calm state so we can give ourselves kind of that reprieve that we need. And with COVID, with the social unrest, all of those things that have been going on, it's been hard for a lot of us, right? Because we're worried about getting sick. We're worried, will I lose my job? All of these things that have, like, what's going to happen next? Our, our brains like change, it, or excuse me, it likes consistency. There's been a lot of changes this past year. I mean, I look out, and everybody's got a mask on. We didn't do that a year ago, you know? And so just all of the changes and constantly kind of adapting to that causes stress. 
whether you realize it or not. So it's important that you're aware of some stressors that are going on so that you can help manage that. Do it as well. We talked about ACEs really, and I'm not going to go into it right now because we're going to have a whole session on it this um, afternoon, but ACEs are another type of chronic stress that impacts our kids. <clears throat> And it impacts our children and has these long-term mental and physical health outcomes from, you know, 19 to 94 years of age. And so it's, what's really interesting is they found, they did, they've done all this research, it kind of started in the mid-90s, and um, they found chronic stress has adverse outcomes on children as when they become adults. But what they also found is are there's these resiliency factors, and or they're called core protective factors. And there's three main ones. And what's so interesting is like we as, you know, like we get into it, we're like, oh, we figured this out. We know how to help. We have these resiliency factors. Well, these resiliency factors have been a part of the church since the beginning of time. And so what, like we're just finally realizing this. So uh, with scientific evidence. So core protective factors include purpose, having esteem, having worth. We have purpose in Christ. We have gifts. God has a, a plan for our lives. And so if we know that, that's a resiliency factor. Another thing is relationships, relationships with each other, relationships with Christ. So also something that the church has always offered as this core protective factor. And then finally, spirituality and community, and that's, that's the church. So we'll talk more about that this afternoon if you're able to come, but that uh, things happen in our kids' lives too that cause chronic stress. And so we need to be aware that it's not just us, it's our kids who are impacted too, and so we need to make sure we're taking care of our kids. So when we're aware of um, stress, when we're aware of our emotions, that's kind of step one. Then we just need, for the next thing we need to do is really simple, we can all do it, is pray. So when we pray, um, there's some things that go on inside of our minds, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but we're bringing this to God, and we're saying, we need, your, we need your help, Jesus. Help me through this difficult situation. Help me through this storm. Help me through, you know, a test coming up. Help me be able to figure out how to pay this bill. Help me through this illness. Whatever it is, you can take it to God. And the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, do not worry, but in all situations pray. Through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So in everything, no matter what we're dealing with, is not too big for God. And we don't have to hide it from him. He already knows. We just have to bring it to him. So when we're aware of our emotions, kind of our stress state, then we can help. It helps us identify maybe what strategy to use after we pray. So if we're worried, besides prayer, maybe we can try some breathing exercises to calm our mind. Breathing and movement and prayer are the three things <clears throat> that you can do any, just about anywhere um, that help calm your mind. So those are really easy. Like if you're like, I, if you walk out of here with like, I don't know where to start, what to do, prayer, slow, deep breaths, and movement helps. Okay, so those are some easy, practical things, right? Like who can, we're all breathing right now, right? So we can do that. <laughs> Like, don't worry, we can do it. Um, there are some other strategies that I'm going to just kind of walk you through so you can feel like you are walking out of here with a practical tool that you can use today if you get worried or you get stressed about anything. Um, and this is important because when we're stressed, when we feel strong emotions, when we're going through storms of life, it impacts all of these areas, spirituality, relationships, physical, you know, our physical aspects, mental, cognitive aspects, psychological, financial, and occupational. But what's interesting is we can do, there are strategies under each of these categories that we can implement to kind of help resolve some of those concerns. And I will, I promise this is the last time I will say it. We'll talk more about this this afternoon because I don't have enough time to go into everything. But like there are some simple strategies that you can use. But one of the things um, when we talk about regulation, after we're aware of our emotions or aware of our stress state, we pray, then there are, we can start regulating. So, you know, Psalm 77, 1 through 20, Asaph is praying. And at the beginning of the um, 
the verses in verses 1 through 9. He's just, he's lamenting. He it feels out of control. He loses his appetite. He can barely eat. He's so upset. And then in the second part in 10 through 20, all of a sudden he changes and he realizes God is there with him, even though he was on scene. And just that thought alone calms him. And then he, he praises God. And so I think if you just spend time in prayer and really try to reflect on him, he can help you see that. Some other things that you can do um, besides prayer, which is most important, are counseling. And I'll talk a little bit about counseling in just a few minutes. You can also try to take different perspectives. I know a lot of times that's really hard to step back and maybe try to see like multiple sides of the story, but um, definitely something that is worthwhile, part of a, a, a package that might help us uh, move forward. And then uh, there are other strategies like medicine, we'll talk about that, and then biblical anchors. And I'll talk about biblical anchors as well. Um, but if you're like, I really need to know how to help X, Y, and Z, you know, my, my colleague, my child, like what can I do to help in this situation? Um, when, when we talk about mental health, it actually impacts at least, or mental illness, excuse me, at least 19% of the population. That's, um, that was based on last year's numbers. And so with COVID, we know that's increased. So if we think about 19%, that's almost one in five people. So if you're like, Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. So, like, it definitely impacts a lot of people. And so you want to be able to have just a couple strategies in your pocket and your toolkit that you can use to help. One of those strategies is co-regulation. So there's a lot with this, but something that we can all do is be with somebody. Be present with them and then use your, this is really practical thing, really practical. Use your voice use your nonverbals to help soothe them. That's really important, especially after just a traumatic event. Just be with them, soothe them. You can also scaffold. So those are just kind of some prompting questions where you're just trying to dig in a little bit more to try to help them um, through it. So what happened? How did you feel? Tell me more about it. You know, just kind of some prompting questions to help guide them through. You can also use some metacognitive strategies. Who has heard of metacognition? Okay. I'm so, you two need to raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so it's thinking about your thinking. That's all it is. Metacognition, thinking about your thinking. It's real simple. And so when you're using a metacognitive, metacognition strategy to kind of help somebody, you're trying to help them think about their thinking. So it could be like, oh, what's worked before? What hasn't worked? You know, just to get them thinking in the right direction. You're not telling them what to do, but you're just trying to get them to think. And then, of course, being em uh, present and being empathetic and compassionate. Bless you. So, um, and this, I, prayer, this really works. There's this whole field, you know, that's kind of coming up, and it's um, looking at what happens in our brains when we start to pray. Now we have all this technology that's happening. And they are fine. Newberg, especially, is kind of a big guy and who, you know, who's been part of this whole movement. But they, what they do is they do brain scans and they watch areas that light up inside your brain when you pray. And what they're finding is that when you pray, your attention area lights up, your language area lights up, like you're having an actual conversation with somebody, God. And you, they see changes in your parietal lobe, which is where you find meaning, you find purpose, it kind of defines who you are. So all of those things that, you know, happen kind of spiritually when we pray, we're seeing physical impacts. There's physical evidence that we can see on brain scans, which is truly amazing. So if you're wondering if prayer works and you haven't actually seen it happen in your life, there's evidence there, just physical evidence that shows that prayer Prayer works. Okay. So now I want to talk about this other strategy. It's called a sphere of control. This is something you can do. You can do it with somebody, you know, if you're trying to help them. You can do it on your own. So if you look at this screen, this is a mess, isn't it? There is a lot of stuff on here. And there's a lot of stuff in our lives. Sometimes we feel like our lives are a mess. There's so many things going on. There's COVID. You know, I've got the kids to worry about. I've got my you know, like whatever, I, the 50 things I have to do today, 
a lot of things are happening in our lives and we feel like overwhelmed by it. And that can cause anxiety or feelings of anxiety. And when we feel anxious, it's because there's a lot of what ifs. There's, you know, we might want to feel some sense of control and that makes it really hard. And so I'm going to show you the sphere of control and you've probably seen it on the internet you know, on Facebook and things like that, but just kind of talk about this from a Christian perspective too. So when we feel out of control, what you can do, you can do this on a napkin, you can do this in your notes that Stephanie put together. Draw a circle, just a circle, and then inside the circle, write down everything that's in your control. So when you go to bed, what you eat, your reactions, if you offer forgiveness, if you're praying, if you seek help, all of these things are in your control. So do that. Then look outside. Outside the circle, write all of the things that are out of your control. So COVID-19, none of us can control that no matter how hard we try. We can't control what other people say, what other people do, what other people think, how they treat me. Even though we want that in our inner circle, we want to be able to control that. We can't. So all of these things are outside of our control. So once we look at what's outside of our control, we need to ask God to help us release and surrender those things so that we can, you know, we can't control that. What we can do is focus on what's inside of that circle, what we can control. And then finally, because we have all these things outside of our control, we know God is ultimately in control of everything. And so just remember that no matter what, you know, even though you control a cert certain amount of things, God is ultimately in control and he's got, he's got you. Nothing is too big. None of those things outside of the circle, inside the circle, is beyond what he can do. The other thing I want to talk about is counseling. And, um, you know, what I want to do when we talk about counseling first is kind of tell you what it is. Counseling is not where people go to get advice. It's not for somebody to tell you what to do. Um, when you work with a counselor, you're going to somebody who, you know, has graduate level training, who can help you process and help you develop a plan to guide you towards some action steps so you can work through whatever concerns you're dealing with. It's not a magic wand. It's not like you go and boop, things are better. That is not how it works at all. It is a process. It's not a quick fix. It's something that you know, it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes you go to counseling and you just need to go for a couple weeks just to kind of process through something and that's okay. Sometimes you need to go to counseling for a longer term for some, some bigger things that are going on where we need, you know, you have to break it down and kind of work through it. So just kind of remember what counseling is not and then what counseling can do. Um, there's a lot here and I'm not going to read it all, but what I just wanted to show you is that counseling can offer a plan, it can help you see some things from a different perspective, it can help you um, on your path toward healing, toward forgiveness, toward hope, and um, can definitely help you feel like you have the power to change, the power to do something um, to make a difference. It can also help you have some realistic expectations about what's going on in, in the world. So if um, you are like, hey, I don't know who to go to or where to go. Um, Stephanie put together sh um, some resources. We looked at some area resources in, um, you know, in the Elkhart area. But you can also go to Psychology Today. Just put Christian Counselor in Elkhart area, and then a bunch of people will pop up. So or you can call um, their office and kind of try to look for somebody who is a good fit for you. So if you go to counseling and you're like, oh my gosh, we just did not gel, try somebody else. It's okay. Like you're, you're talking to them about intimate things. So you want to make sure you, you feel comfortable to do that. Okay. So counseling, now we're going to talk about medication. So this is something that has a place in a treatment package, medication, counseling, all of those things, you kind of need like a whole package to be able to do it. Just taking the pill isn't going to answer all of the problems. So I just want you to know that you have to discuss this with your medical doctor, so your primary care physician, a psychiatrist, somebody who can prescribe medicine. A lot of times they're going to ask you a lot of questions because they want to rule other things out first. Um, and then after you discuss that, you, you know, when you're talking about taking medication, you really want to um, view it as a gift. 
you know, something that can help you. If you are sick, you know, like, I don't know, you have an ulcer. You go and you take some medication to help with that ulcer. If you are struggling with a mental health concern, sometimes we need medication to help with that because a lot of um, mental health concerns like depression have a physical base. And so we need a physical answer to problems with a physical base. And so um, you'll, you'll work with your doctor to be able to do that. I think that taking medication is a real struggle for a lot of Christians to kind of wrap their head around like, should I do it, should I not do it? I don't feel like I should. Um, maybe they feel guilty. Maybe they feel like if I start taking medication, it somehow signifies a lack of faith, and that's not it at all. Uh, like I said, medication is to help with physical problems, and sometimes, not for every situation, but sometimes medication is needed. And so if you are needing medication, talk to your doctor about that. Don't feel bad about it. Take what you need to do to make yourself start feeling better. Um, and take it as prescribed, of course. Um, so, so that we can um, start walking through uh, life feeling a little bit better. The other thing that's really helpful, you know, when you pray and when you're trying to think about everything, you're trying to process it, it really helps to have biblical anchors. So it could be stories, it could be verses that really help. Um, so there are a couple different situ situations kind of for different people, different feelings, different seasons of life. Um, so sometimes things happen to us. It, um, maybe we're a victim of abuse. Maybe um, you know some terrible things have happened in our lives and it's caused a lot of stress and a lot of emotional pain, a lot of storms in our life. Think of Job. You know, he lost his whole family, he lost his livelihood, he lost everything, but he clung to God. He did not, he was very faithful to God, and God blessed him for that. So when you're struggling, when you feel like those storms are just beating down on you, think of Job, and that's a biblical anchor that you can hang on to. Also, um, sometimes we do things in our lives, like we're human, you know, we make mistakes, um, and that might cause different things that happen in our lives, different outcomes, um, because of some of our behaviors, because of some of our choices. Think of David. You know, David was this great guy who served God, and God blessed him and used him in so many ways, but David murdered. He committed adultery, but God still used him. You know, so just remember, like, no matter what we've done, God can still use us. He forgives us. There's redemption um, through that you can think of Saul and Paul, you know, Saul persecuted Christians, and then now he's the author of some of the books of the Bible. So um, just remember, no matter what we've done, God still loves us. He can still use us. And then um, when we talk about things that we've done, I like the story of the prodigal son, because this is a story about guy. He's rich. He has these two sons. One of the sons comes to the father and says, hey, can I have my inheritance early? And so the father gives the son his inheritance early, and the son goes off. He lives this crazy life. He squanders it, and then he ends up, you know, essentially eating with the animals, and he's kind of hit rock bottom. And he was like, man, I got to go back to the father because I can't keep doing this. And all he had to do was turn and start going back to his father. And the father saw, he was waiting for him. Saw him coming a long way off, ran to him with open arms. And that's what God does. He waits for us. He's there waiting for us to come. So just remember that. And then um, this is a verse that I often pray. This is kind of my biblical anchor. It's Deuteronomy 31.8. And it's just the Lord himself goes before you. He is not bound by time or any of these things. So if you're worried about something coming up, God's already been there. You know, he's already gone before you, and he's going to be with you wherever you go. So just remember that. So those are some biblical anchors, I think, that help provide hope, provide hope in Christ to give us purpose, to give us clarity, and so we can turn to him. So what about this? What if I do all of these things? I'm aware of my emotions. I've done all these regulation strategies. Maybe I go to counseling. I've taken medication. I pray all the time, but I'm not healed. What about that? Well, 
this is hard, and we don't always know why that happens. And just like with mental or physical concerns, mental health concerns have a physical base, and sometimes God doesn't heal us from physical ailments on earth. And we may not know why. And so if that's the case for you, I would just encourage you to ask God to help you through that, to help, help you find peace, to help you find hope. Maybe use your situation to help others who are in a, a similar circumstance as you. Um, grow in your prayer life with God. Use the situation to draw closer to him. Maybe he's having you go through that because he needs you. But he wants us, like, totally relying on him. And so maybe he's using this situation to rely on him. Use it to connect with others and know that no matter what is happening in your life, no matter what mental illness you're going through, you have purpose, you have value, you have worth, and God loves you no matter what. So where do I go? Where, I, you know, you hear all this information, I want to do something. This is a journey. Just remember that. So you want to start off with just saying, like, it's, if I'm dealing with mental illness, if I'm dealing with a lot of stress in my life, is this something that I want to continue to live in, or do I want to try to find that hope and that peace? And then if you decide that that's for you, then start with prayer. Just talk to God. Tell him where you're at. He knows. But just talk to him. Let him know where you're at. Let him know that you want to get better. You're trying to work through some issues and ask him to kind of help help you through that. Be aware of your emotional states. Be aware of your stress state. Um, we all deal with stress, so just be aware of that. Um, try some regulation strategies. And then, and, and very important, connect with others. Connect through small group. Connect through a Sunday school class. You know, Jesus was connected. He had his small group. They went everywhere with him. Those disciples did. So make sure you have a small group so you're connecting with others. Um, you also might want to just look into some practical strategies. Maybe start looking into counseling strategies. If you have kids in school and they're struggling, there are psychologists, there are school counselors, there are clinical social workers, there are a lot of services in schools that can help support your family and they can help uh, not only your child, but help connect families to different resources too. So if you have kids in school, don't be afraid to reach out and ask. There are supports available to help you through that journey. Um, Oakland is a community mental health provider and they take insurance and people without insurance. So if you need help, Oakland is a great community resource. Resource They have a lot of wraparound services that can kind of look at the big picture of what, I, what you need in your life to help you through at this point. Um, so I would encourage you to reach out. If you have a job and you're like, okay, I need some counseling, check out if your um, employer offers an employee assistance program or an EAP. These are, um, oftentimes employers will offer this and it's a couple free counseling sessions to get you started. It's not free counseling forever, but at least get you started. Sometimes it's all you need just to kind of process through something. Um, and then if you need more after your free counseling sessions are up, you already have a therapeutic relationship established with somebody and you can keep going. Um, the other thing I want to say is if you are struggling and you feel like you know, you're concerned about harming yourself, somebody else, get help immediately. I can't talk about mental health without saying that. Like, don't think it won't happen or um, that, you know, you can, you can deal with it yourself. If you're somebody you love is struggling with that, call 911, go to an emergency room, go to Epworth Memorial, call the National Suicide Prevention Helpline. Like, whatever you need, take it very seriously and get help immediately. And then um, I really just encourage you to kind of identify biblical anchors. And I think at different seasons in our life, different storms, there's going to be different biblical anchors that we kind of cling to, but cling to those and remind yourself of those all the time to help you through uh, whatever you're going through. And then grab onto hope, connect with your church, get involved in a small group um, that can help you. So I just want to end on this, um, this verse. Isaiah 9 6 his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace and God Jesus is our wonderful counselor and we have him to connect all the time and so um, even if you know you're not sure who to go to and it's two o'clock in the morning you can go to God so just remember that 
Um, and I just want to thank you all for letting me come be with you today. Um, I really appreciate and I'm so excited that the church is talking about mental health and some real issues that a lot of us kind of deal with. And I know that today might have brought up some things that are, that are you know, we're dealing with. We're, we're all dealing with stress. We've all been through a really different year, right? With COVID, with the social unrest. And so um, there's that. Some of us might have some things that we just need some healing for. And so the church wants to respond. And so Pastors Tim and Pastor John Hollis are going to come. And if you want to be anointed and ask for healing, you can. So um, they'll come down here. This isn't going to be like a confessional. It's just a brief time. We, you know, you don't have to feel bad um, about coming up. This is something that is in the Bible. You know, if, if you need healing, you can ask for healing. And the elders of the church can come and anoint you. So we would just want to offer this this opportunity for you to come and um, again come back this afternoon after lunch but I'm going to close this out in prayer and then uh, we'll hear from the worship team so uh, amazing God thank you so much for this time together to be able to talk about mental health and real issues that uh, we're all dealing with help us to gain a sense of self Always remember that we can come to you in prayer. Help us and guide us as we think about next steps if we're dealing with a storm in life and we just need additional support. If there are people here that just need an additional touch today, need to ask for healing from you, Lord, help them come. Help them feel your presence. Please heal them through uh, your anointing love from Pastor Tim and Pastor John Hollis. Um, help us through all of our storms in life. Help us know that you love us no matter what, no, where, no matter where we're going, no matter how we're feeling, that you're always there with us and you want us to draw close to you. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. And
your family and your children and their children and their children. May His presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you. church for being willing to stay and to listen and to pray and to seek that anointing that healing thank you jenny for what you shared with us here this morning i'm looking forward to being back and to hearing more and to learning more god is doing something wonderful and i want to just remind you that we are going to be back here at 1 p.m and we're going to continue talking about this just a praise i want to share with you i have a couple a uh, couple of uh individuals down here that uh really uh really love Northside and have really been drawn to Northside and uh, Victor was sharing with me that they have shared that one of the reasons they like coming here is because we pray and uh, they get a sense that something happens when this church prays something happens when people pray and so uh, that's exciting so thank you Northside for being a praying church it really is making a difference and it was so neat to hear what Jenny shared about some of the things that take place in our brains when we pray. And uh, I hope that that spurs you to continue calling upon the Lord. Well, church, would you stand with me here this afternoon? We've sung it, but now I want to pronounce it over you, a blessing. And then we're going to dismiss, grab lunch, um, and come back around 1 p.m. and we'll continue. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Go and make sure you return. We are going to have child care available too as well. So um, those of you with kids, uh, bring them back. We'll have something going on for them. But we will continue to learn about mental health. God bless.